Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and today's podcast is for those of you who are still struggling to recover from the trauma of your divorce, to move on and put it behind you. Today's special guest is the divorce recovery specialist and the creator of the Divorce Rehab Program, Wendy Sterling. Thank you for coming on, Wendy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we're going to have a great episode today. I want to let my listeners know, as I always do, about um, your background so that they understand where you're coming from and why you're such a divorce recovery specialist. So let me just give a few of your many qualifications here. You are a certified life coach, writer, author, and speaker, and you help divorced women. But I, I do want to say, I think what you're, we're going to be talking about today is equally applicable to men um, who also go through divorce trauma and need recovery. But um, you help people recover from their divorce by remembering who they are and what they are capable of. And in describing your program, you, you have some key tenets that I just think really resonated with me while I was reading the description. You seek to help them end the pity party, mourn the marriage, and move forward with dignity to see how much better life is afterwards. And that just so goes to the core of what I want people to know and understand through divorce and beyond. So I'm, I'm another reason why I'm thrilled you're here. Um, you're also a contributing author to It's Okay to Not Be Okay, which is a phenomenal title. I think that's great. Um, and your chapter in that book is entitled Divorce Has a Silver Lining, which I think will sound familiar maybe to some of my listeners. I recently had attorney Lisa Ziderman on, and we were talking about divorce, the good news, so silver lining. Um, you also, I just want people to know that you have an upcoming coming divorce recovery made easier summit. I'm in fact involved in that and I'm very excited about what you're doing. We're definitely going to talk about that. So I want people to know to hang on through the episode so we can give more information. But again, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. And wow, it's, it's amazing when you hear somebody read about you. <laughs> Feels good. really good. <laughs> You've done a lot, and uh, and I will say, I think you had a career in advertising at one point. Is that correct? You yes. come up with some good catchy phrases. I, I will tell you, um, and we're going to talk about some of them. The first one is divorce recovery specialist. Uh, right then and there, I think you're the only person I've ever heard describe themselves that way. Um, it's one of the first things that caught me about you know your description. But let's tell the listeners what a divorce recovery specialist is what you do and why it's so important. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I, I, I love that, you know, you, you like my, um, my title because essentially that's really what I do with my clients is I specialize in helping women specifically um, recover from the trauma of your divorce. And the, the way in which I go about doing that and really why I call myself that is because I see divorce as a way for women to use it as an empowerment experience for them to be able to find their true identity and voice so that they can start creating the life that they want instead of living the life that they feel stuck with. And because I went through this process myself, I actually coach my clients and walk them through my program based on the recovery that I did. And I know that it works because I'm sitting here, you know, recovered from a pretty traumatic and unexpected divorce and was able to get through it in under a year. So the type of work that I do with my clients as you said, is really to hit on the key points that I struggled with, that I worked on with my own coach to be able to recover more quickly. I, I love that you just mentioned you worked with a coach. Yeah, I think that's very, I don't think I've ever had another expert on who said that they worked with another expert when they were going through their own divorce experience. Um, and I, I like that. That's, you know, I'm, I'm a divorce attorney, but when I got divorced, I had a divorce attorney. So I think it's a, a great thing for people to know that we all need to reach out for help. And there are people out there who have expertise that we simply don't have. Um, so your area of expertise, I think, is vitally important in what I'm going to call the divorce continuum, because I sit with people all the time who come to me after their divorce is final. It can be years. And they are very clearly still stuck in the trauma 
of what happened in their divorce. They're still consumed by it. It's still, they're still there in the divorce, even if time has really moved forward. Um, I actually just had lunch with a friend and she was telling me about a friend of hers who uh, is 25 years, 25 years past the divorce and still refers to her husband's new wife of 23 years as the whore, you know, which I, whatever that that's is. not for healthy someone. for anybody, unfortunately. Yeah, that's yeah. unfortunate. So, so I think what we, you know, what you do is so important for people to know about. And I don't think that people know that there's help in this area. They think the divorce is done. Life is now going to, you know, quickly be better or different. And it's not, there's still a lot to heal from. So you have created, here's another one of those great <laughs> names you come up with, the Divorce Rehab Program. Again, good name. Um, and, you know, much as recovery from addiction involves some tough love, your program, based on what I was reading and what you've told me, it, it involves a little tough love too. Instead, In fact, you say it's for those who need a kick in the ass. So why don't you tell us what you mean by that? Sure. So <laughs> yes, and it's actually, that's what my clients tell me. Um, it's a direct quote from one of my clients is that I give her the kick in the ass that she needs every day that we talk. Um, so essentially what that means is this. I mean, we all, all of us who go through divorce have amazing support systems, right? And whether that be through friends and or family, but the difference is, is that our friends and family typically tell us things we want to hear, right? Things like you're going to be okay, or, um, you know, you'll get over this really soon or just move on. And, you know, and, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're so uncomfortable talking about the topic themselves that they try to project their fears onto you by moving you past that conversation. And I'm not saying it's not coming from a place of love because I have amazing friends and an amazing family that was there for me, but the type of support I was getting from them was not healing aspects of my divorce that I really needed. And so what I bring to the table when I say that I give my clients tough love and that kick in the ass is that I'm a completely unbiased party, right? I'm not sitting there judging them. So many of us are afraid that our friends are judging us. I think that's why a lot of us, including my clients, wait so long to tell people either that they're getting divorced or that they are separated is because of the shame um, of being judged. And that's where I come in as a divorce recovery specialist is really to hold space for wherever it is that they're at in a judgment-free zone but at the same time, I'm really listening to not just what words are being said, but I use my intuition to tap into a lot of what is not being said. And I am intuitive in the way that I also, things come to me as I'm talking to my clients and I always ask permission, you know, I'm not, I'm not mean about it, <laughs> but I do ask permission to be able to, to bolt what I call boldly coach them. And so I'll ask permission that if something's coming up for me that may be uncomfortable for them, do I have permission to share? And every single time I am able to speak my mind to them of what I think is going on, all of a sudden I get a pause and they go, oh my God, I've never said that out loud. How did you know? And so it's, it's that aspect, you know, of really kind of calling people on their shit, if I may swear again, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, go for uh, it. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's, it's partly that, but then there's also the accountability piece, right? So, you know, we do not hold ourselves accountable for anything. I mean, let's be honest, we make up excuses all the time. And especially in divorce, we are really good at storytelling. And so what I also bring to the table with my clients and sort of with the type of coaching that I do is I hold my clients accountable. So with each session, there is always an assignment, right, that they design, but that I hold them accountable for, and we design when that's going to be done by. And so having that accountability partner is really important. Um, again, somebody who is not closely tied to you, who is unbiased and, you know, provides you with that support that you need in a way that's going to push you forward. I think that's very insightful what you what you've been talking about here so there's two things that I sort of want to pull out about what you just said um, the first would be the accountability because again I, I talk to a lot of people about their divorces and it's always a tale of what 
has been done to them. I'm being divorced. My husband's divorcing me. My wife is divorcing me. And it's always a tale of what the other person did wrong in the relationship. Um, and there's very rarely anything about your role or the person's role in the breakdown of that marriage. And, and as you know, the, in the family law arena, there's a legal theory that you know, no fault divorce essentially means that it takes two people to make a marriage, it takes two people to break a marriage. Now, certainly there are instances where that may be skewed, but I don't know anyone who ever has played into the breakdown of their marriage with having no culpability whatsoever. Um, so I do think that accountability to take accountability for what you did and what you did in your relationship is part of what you're working with people with. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, if I may say one more thing about that, I mean, I think it's really important. And again, this is something I work on with my clients is that marriage takes two people. And regardless of the reason behind why you're getting divorced or who did what to whom, we all have to own our side of the street and we have to work on cleaning it up in order for us to just move forward, period, right? It's not, it's not about um, pointing the finger because if you're going to point a finger outward, you've also got to point one inward. Well, and frankly, pointing that finger outward is not going to get you anything. I mean, I, we've done on my former podcast, we did an episode about, you know, divorce law versus divorce justice. The people, if you think you're going into divorce and saying this person is all bad, it's all their fault. I get everything. They get nothing. That's not how it's going to happen. And all you're going to end up is frustrated and stuck, which is a lot of what you're talking about and what you're helping people do is the reason I think people stay stuck in their trauma of their divorce is not because of what's been done to them. Those can be horrible things, but because they stay there and they do nothing to move forward from it. And part of what I think I'm hearing you say, and I believe it to be true, is that you do have to own your own shit <laughs> to get out of that situation. You do, 100%. And the other thing that I, I know that you talk about this in, in your program, and I think that this is also another important factor, and I just sort of want to flesh it out a bit more um, and take it a little further, is the support systems that we have in place are critical to us. Yes, we need the shoulder to cry on. We need someone to go to to give us the hug when we need it. But you're right, family and friends, they love us. They're going to say what we, they think we want to hear. But you, you take that even a little bit further because in the world we live in today, people find support in many different places, especially online. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I know that there are a number of uh, support groups on social media, Facebook has, is you know, full of them. And you, although they can be helpful, I know you have an important caution for people about them. And I do think that this is really important for people to understand. I go on them sometimes and the things that I see on there as in a divorce attorney and a divorce person scare me a little bit. So maybe you could share a little bit more about that with the listeners. Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, we all have to do what works for us. So by no means am I saying that this, you know, is what I think everybody should be doing. I just, the caution, as you said, that I have around these types of groups, especially Facebook groups around um, divorce or separation and support for that is, you know, I find them to be places where pity parties are perpetuated. And I also find it to be a massive competition of my story's worse than your story. And it drives me crazy because what these groups should be doing instead is empathizing right? And holding the person's feelings separate from your own and separate from your own experience, because that's why they're coming to this. And for me, a lot of these Facebook groups are, you know, imagine going to, um, you know, I know that divorce is not, you know, AA, but imagine going to an AA meeting with no leader and everybody's just sitting in a circle in the room with no leader. And it's one person, you know, trying to outweigh the other. And there's no, you know, there's no sort of regulation going on. And while some of these groups are moderated, they're not moderated consistently. That not every comment and every person's comment is being moderated. Um, there are some very mean people in there as well. And 
you know, I've actually had, I had to leave them quite a while ago because some of these women were triggering me um, in, you know, bringing stuff up that either I had already worked through or things that I had forgotten about for a reason. And so, you know, that's why, for example, I mean, I have my own private Facebook group and one of the big um, rules that I have in that group is you are not allowed to bring your own story in to somebody else's post. You can empathize and say, I'm so sorry, I know what you're feeling, but you have to sit with where they are. You cannot one up them, right? And right. that's the piece that gets really dangerous. And, you know, sometimes I do try to go back in and, you know, read some of the posts, but you know, the other thing that I also caution is there's, there's regular people giving advice to other people saying, oh, you need a shrink or you need medication or, you know, somebody who is thinking thoughts that shouldn't be discussed or there's abuse and nobody's bothering to reach out and say, maybe you need to call a helpline or maybe you should go see your doctor. So we just have to be really careful, um, you know, with, with how it is that you're engaging and ensuring that you're not getting sucked into what I call like this rabbit hole of pity that you will never get yourself out of. I think those are all wonderful points. And I, I especially think that the fact that many of these sites are unmoderated, um, that there's not someone there facilitating the conversation. Mm -hmm. I do think that getting support from people who are going through the same thing is definitely there's, there's value to that. But mm -hmm. There's also misinformation that's shared that way. There's, you know, I see things where people give their interpretation of what the law is around things. Mm -hmm. And I just, as a lawyer say, oh my <laughs> God, you know, and then I feel like I have to be the law cop and jump on there. So I agree with you. I'm glad that, that you shared that caution. We are not saying don't get help mm -hmm. um, or get support um, where, where you can find it. But pulling yourself back into, you know, the more often you tell your pitiful tale, the more pitiful it is um, and the more you become pitiful. So stay in that for a minute and think about, you know, who you want to be, to be um, what's, what's empowering about being the victim in a pitiful tale. Um, you know, so repeating it over and over, I also can see that in a group like that will just continue to perpetuate your story. Um, yeah, so, and that victim mindset, right? That nobody wants to be in. We all fight to get out of it, but yet we can't let go. Right. That's where professional help comes in and, and is, is what definitely helped me and what helps a lot of my clients. Well, and maybe this goes to, and maybe this ties in with your rehab program, because there's also something a little addicting about getting all that sympathy and attention for suffering the abuse or whatever there is. But, you know, as, as we all know, addiction is not necessarily something positive we need to work from. So I always try to make sure in these episodes with, with my experts, you know, you all have this expertise. What are some other tips from your rehab program that you could, you know, without giving away your state secrets, but what are some little tips that listeners could do today to start themselves on the right path? Yeah, you know, the one big tip that I always give to people is the opposite of what people want to do, um, but it's what works. And that is that you have to allow yourself to feel whatever it is that's coming up and not push the feeling away. Um, if, you know, for example, I had a client who, you know, was so excited for it to be New Year's, but for some reason she was crying on New Year's Day and she couldn't explain why. And she texted me and was like, am I crazy? Is something wrong with me? And I said to her, I said, well, why do you think you're crazy if you're crying? If there's, there's clearly something there that needs to be worked through. So really sit with that. And, you know, we talked on the phone for about a good 15 minutes just to let her feel that. And I think that, you know, we, especially as women, try so hard to be this strong person through this process. And yes, you can still be strong and cry. Actually, you're stronger if you allow yourself to feel whatever emotion it is that's coming up. So I would encourage your listeners to really allow themselves and give themselves permission to feel whatever it is that is coming up and to safely deal with it. 
Um, you know, whether that be to cry if you're angry and you need to, you know, sometimes I have clients, you know, write stuff down and then safely burn it or rip it up. Or I'll have clients go, you know, if they're with their kids, like have them go into a closet and take a pillow with them and just scream into the pillow or on a drive, turn the music up really loud and start screaming and singing loudly or whatever it is. But you really just have to let yourself feel that is my number one and always and forever tip that I share with people. Um, I think that number two would probably be, um, you know, this takes time, right? Divorce, um, divorce is really a marathon. It's not a sprint. And giving yourself or having enough grace and compassion for yourself to just go with the process, right? There, there is no magic pill that you can swallow that will speed this process up by any means. And with that, and you and I talk about this too, is that unless you allow yourself to sort of go down that journey, you're not gonna see what the gift of your divorce is in the aftermath of it all, right? Because every single one of us have and see what that gift is. And so if you're not allowing yourself the grace and compassion to just be on the path and to stop speeding through it, it's going to take you that much longer. Yeah. If you, if you block yourself from the journey that you're on, then you're going to be like the woman I mentioned earlier, who's 25 years down the road, still you know, in the anger of that, that process, as opposed to having lived her life for 25 years. So, um, you know, I, I, I love that the fact of what you're doing with the rehab is really focused on the person themselves, not on the process of the divorce or the separation or the the facts of what's happened it's really internally focused and i know for you you mentioned earlier in the episode that you yourself have been divorced and so many of us well so many of us in the world with 50 percent of all marriages ending in <laughs> divorce and beyond um you know, have been through the process. Many divorce professionals are included in that, both of us. But I think it helps um, listeners to understand when they hear my expert stories, it helps them to identify. So would you share just a little bit about your experience and maybe from a focus of what you've learned since your divorce that would have been helpful to you had you known it when you were going through it? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm very open with my story. So, um, you know, I was happily married, or at least I thought I was. Um, for no, that's, just, that's something I think people will will empathize with right there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, uh, for about 15 years. And, you know, I was working in corporate America at the time, pretty demanding job in, in a leadership role, juggling that plus two kids, supporting, you know, my ex-husband's career as well. Um, and, you know, lo and behold, one day, the entire foundation of my life just came out from underneath me. Um, and I had discovered um, some really bad choices that he was making. And unfortunately, it was unrepairable. Um, and so he and I um, separated and I decided to uh, figure out what this all meant because in no way, shape or form was I, you know, I was never that person, right? None of us ever think that divorce is going to happen to us. Um, you know, we were that couple that everyone said, you guys are the last people we would have ever thought this would have happened to. And, you know, I choose my words very carefully because I actually now say that my divorce didn't happen to me, it happened for me. And the reason that it did was because it was my wake up call to start really paying attention to myself, my needs, what I wanted, and to start respecting myself enough to create the life that I wanted instead of feeling like I had to be stuck in the life that I was handed. And so um, through a lot of self-help and therapy, I did a lot of inner work, but there was still something missing. And, you know, as I said earlier, I had a coach because I discovered coaching and it was through signing up for actually learning how to be a coach um, that I was also being coached in the classroom at the same time. And through that process, realized the importance of continuing that type of work with somebody outside of the classroom. So um, I did work with a coach one-on-one -on -one while I was also getting certified as a coach. Um, and I know a 
lot of us coaches will tell you that, you know, every coach has a coach, yeah. um, you know, cause we're always works in progress. And I realized that the work that I was doing with my coach was actually what was propelling me forward. It wasn't therapy, it wasn't the books, it wasn't the conversations I was having with people and friends. And so I decided that I was gonna do this full time because I saw that within a year I was through so much trauma um, and so much pain that I had been through. And I left my corporate America job and started from zero and launched my, you know, my coaching business focusing on divorce. And so, and that was about two years ago and I haven't looked back since, but it's also enabled me to give back and sort of gift other people um, the tools that I wish I had had um, that I, yes, I paid to receive how to do them, but I've now manipulated them in a way that enables me to help get people through this process more quickly. And that's my proprietary divorce rehab program that is a five step, essentially a five step process that takes women from the place of I do to I did to I'm done. And it's all about working with themselves. And I wish that I had had a lot of these tools. And I would have told myself, even the year before I discovered coaching, to go find a coach. Um, because what that also does is it enables you to talk to somebody who has no preconceived judgments about you. And I've never been more comfortable speaking about something so shameful at the time than a group of strangers. It was the best thing I, or best gift I gave myself was to force myself to be vulnerable. And once I was able to do that, it became so much more easily. So I would encourage people to be willing to be vulnerable with those that provide a safe community and a safe place for you. Because if you're not, you're not going to get through this. And that was so terrifying for me because I, you know, with my childhood, I was, I was, you know, I was taught to be, you know, the nice little girl and you sit there and you nod your head and you don't disrespect authority, even if you have your own opinions. And so it was really hard for me to kind of step over that threshold of using my voice and not knowing what people's reactions were going to be about it. So um, that's another big piece of advice that I would also give to my former self is to not af be afraid to be more vulnerable more often. It with people that are, you know, safe enough to be vulnerable with. I'm not saying you should be vulnerable to everybody or with everybody, but in those safe type of environments. Right. It's, it's almost uh, Brene Brown's message of power through vulnerability, which is somewhat hard to grasp um, mm -hmm. until you've experienced it as you have. So thank you for sharing that because that's powerful. Uh, yeah. That's powerful stuff. And, and finding the place where you can be vulnerable with a coach or with somebody who can help you through this in that place of, you mentioned earlier, non-judgment. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope people will reach out for that because there is such power in that space. Um, so we are running close to the end of time, but I want to be sure because you are, have created a, a wonderful resource for people. It's coming up and I mentioned it at the beginning of the top of the episode. You've recreated the Divorce Recovery Made Easier Summit. I'm honored to say I'm participating as one of your experts. I'm very honored. Thank you. Um, but tell everybody about the summit and what inspired you to create it. Sure. So um, the summit is, as you said, it's, it's called Divorce Recovery Made Easier. And the purpose of the summit is to really help people to see how they can heal, rediscover their identity, and to start confidently creating the life that they so desire. And the inspiration behind this summit really came from um, two places. It was a conversation that I had had a couple of months ago with actually with Lindsay Ellison, who's also one of our guests. Um, and he will be a guest on this podcast coming up soon. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, and so Lindsay and I were actually having a conversation and talking about how, um, you know, there isn't this type of a summit type environment where there's all these other types of summits. And, you know, and I said, you know what, you're right. And, you know, she's like, you know, you should, you know, go for it. Maybe this, you can figure this out. And so I started doing a bunch of research and I had sort of an epiphany one day when I was sitting at um, a conference and I realized that 
I was the one who was supposed to do this. I just had this premonition. I visualized it. Um, and over the last, you know, at that time, you know, prior to that, about six months prior, I started making connections within our divorce community, you know, one of whom I think you were actually probably my first. Um, and just, I've been networking and there's a reason why I've been making all these connections. And, you know, you're heavily out there and so many of your colleagues and peers are also out there and yet we're all doing and speaking about divorce but talking about it sort of swimming in our own little lanes and i wanted to make sure or what i am inspired to do is to get us all together so that we can all use the information that we have the knowledge the expertise and the tools and be able to provide something for women and you know who can actually tangibly take it and do something with it you know it, one of the things i wish i had was a place where i could get all of these different nuggets of information across so many different areas and you know because of you know people like you so covering off on you know law and mediation and also um i have wellness experts i have entrepreneurs financial experts authors, bloggers, TEDx speakers, all of whom talk about from, you know, the pre process of divorce through after divorce and, you know, as your podcast, Divorce and Beyond. So we go through that whole process, but it's going to be a one-stop shop essentially for people to get information that they need to help navigate their divorce process more easily. And so I'm going to be releasing videos every day. They, it launches on February 4th and there's going to be one video per day for three weeks. And the order in which the videos are going to be releasing is going to be exactly that from that pre through that post process so that people can see and navigate their way through. Um, and my biggest goal with the summit is really to make sure that even just this from the smallest tip of you know i got one little nugget that helped me navigate my divorce that much more easily to something big epiphany wide where someone has an aha moment that completely shifts the way that they think or perhaps they completely shift the way that they want to interact with their ex right i've got lindsay coming on talking about narcissism which comes up so frequently <laughs> it so, does <laughs> so you know my goal is really to and my mission is to show is to show women that divorce can be an empowering experience that they can leverage for themselves and every single guest that is participating has either been through their own divorce and have created an incredible business because of it on the other side, or they've been working with women of divorce or people of divorce successfully for a long period of time. So everybody's providing so many incredible tips and tools and advice, and it's going to be incredible. I can't wait for it uh, to launch. And um, I'm just so honored to sort of be the conduit of, of this mission that I know you all feel so passionate about. Uh, you've done an amazing job and have pulled together an incredible roster of experts. So yeah. I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, how can people find out about the, the summit? How can they sign up um, and find out more about you as well? Sure. The best place I would say is my website. Um, so www.wendysterling.net. Um, on my homepage, I actually have um, a link. Uh, there's a button on the top of my website where you can get more information about the summit. Um, there will also be information about uh, who all of the speakers are and you can register. It's completely free. Um, so you just have to enter in your name and email to get access and you'll be added to the list and once the summit launches it will all be in your inbox for you to watch at your leisure and one other thing um, if i can mention i know each of the experts has created a special gift for participants i created a special private episode of this podcast so mm -hmm. if you go to the summit you will also get access to that um, private podcast episode so thank you you know wendy uh, oh i do think you had also a special offer for listeners. Oh, yeah. What I want to forget that. 
<laughs> no, it's okay. I kind of forgot too. Um, no, so I would love to offer um, everybody who is tuning in um, the opportunity to have a 15 minute divorce recovery call with me. Um, we can use that time however it is that you would like. If you just need somebody to listen, if you are looking for 15 minutes of, you know, speed coaching, I'm really good at that. So um, we can use that time however it is that you would like. If you want to learn more about what I do in my program, happy to share that as well. So um, I will provide you with that link um, as well. Um, but you can also find that on my website too. So whatever's easiest. The, well, first I have to say, I love the speed coaching. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I will, also, I'll put everything in the show notes and all of the information, but I just want to thank you for sharing your expertise and your, your own story with listeners today. This is such a critical part of divorce that so many people just are not prepared for. Um, and the sooner you start, let me just point this out, the sooner you start your divorce recovery, you don't have to wait until the divorce is over. You can start your divorce recovery when you start your divorce, uh, before you start your divorce. So I hope people reach out to you and, and thank you again, Wendy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Susan. I'm so appreciative of the opportunity and I love what you're doing in this world as well. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you.